This is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Today we're going to do the last problem on the general curriculum math subtest. This is a, an MTEL math exam for elementary school teachers and special education teachers K through 8 that are preparing to take the uh, math MTELs, this particular math MTEL, to get their licensure um, uh, in the state of Massachusetts. But this is also a really good problem, and these are also a very good set of problems for teachers on the elementary, middle school, and high school level to study as they prepare for their math MTELs. And obviously, if, uh, um, if you need extra help, I rec would recommend that you attend one of the MTEL Math Live workshops where you can actually raise your hand, work with other teachers, ask questions, you know, get all sorts of different ways of learning information. But definitely... Um, you know, for now, let's look at this problem. Um, if you've been watching these videos, I want you to apply as many different strategies as you can. But let's start. I always want to start and uh, by looking at the big picture. What do I see in the big picture? Now, even before I get to this problem, I'm thinking it's the end of the test. This is where they're going to ask me probability and data analysis questions. So I shouldn't be surprised if I see something like a, a pie chart here, which presents information um, either in a table, a chart, a graph. Um, it presents a specific information in a certain way. So this is that sort of data analysis and um, you know portion of that test. And I'm studying that skill, and I already know I'm going to see that on these problems towards the end of the test. So I already prepared prepared for uh, seeing that. So I'm, my my brain's already warmed up for it. At the same time, this is also where probability comes in. So I'm not going to be surprised if I read this if um, part of the question has the word probability in it. So let's, uh, let's read this question over. Use the spinner below to answer the question that follows. We have a spinner. The spinner looks like it's made up of uh, five pieces and all sorts of different options here. The host at a party tells her guests that every time the spinner above uh, lands on the section fruit basket, Guests will win a large basket of fruit. If 180 guests at the par if the 180 guests at the party each spin the spinner once, what is the best estimate of the number of fruit baskets the host will be giving away? Ah, the fruit basket question. <laughs> you know, I've never been to a party where the host is spinning uh, a spinner and passing out fruit baskets and smiles and be happy, but in this party of 180 people, a lot of people are going to go home very lucky with a fruit basket. And uh, let's figure out how we would do this. First of all, what is, how many people, what's our, when we think about probability, even though it doesn't say it here, this is very much a probability question. Um, what is the probability that uh, someone's going to spin the spinner? You might say that's all the people because everyone coming in is going to do it. So there's 180 people that are going to be spinning this spinner. Now, what portion of them are actually going to get that fruit basket? Well, out of this spinner here, if it spins fairly uh, evenly, um, it looks like one-fifth of everyone that comes in is going to land on that fruit basket based on the proportions of the spinner. So it's going to be one-fifth of 180. Okay, well how do I find out one-fifth of 180? I just made two equivalent fractions. That's one way of doing it. I could have said one-fifth is equal to 20 percent and then like what's 20 percent of 180? And then I would have had to do some multiplication. I could be like, hey, if I'm trying to find out 20 percent of 180, well, I, I know that 10%, 10% of 180 is like just moving the decimal over. So 10% is equal to 18. So 20% would be double that, right? So double 18 would get me the answer. Or I could have been like, I'm trying to find out 20% of 180, so I'm going to multiply that by a decimal. 20% is equal to 0.2, and I would get an answer. Or I could do it the way that I set it up here, which is something over 180 is going to be equal to one-fifth, one-fifth of my whole. Now, how do I do it this way? Well, how do I get from 5 to 180? 
five times, and this is where you might want to do 180, right? Divided by five, goes in what, three times, carry the 15, bring down the three, makes a 30, six times. So I got a total, five goes into 180, 36 times. So five times 36 equals 180. So one times 36 equals 180. Or I could go back to my other two ways. You know, 10% of 20 is 18. So that means 20% is twice 10%. And that gets me to my 36. Or I could have done this multiplication out here, multiplying 118, 180 by uh, 0.2, because that's the represent representation of 20%. Well, 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 18 is 6, carry the 1. 2 times 1 is 2, plus the 1 is a 3. Now, 360, i got to remember, i got to factor in that decimal, which means I move the, answer, the decimal over here one space, and I get 36. Three different ways to approach this problem, but they all get me to approximately 36 of the people, you know, are going to get that fruit basket. Okay, team, I hope you found this video helpful, and I hope you found uh, you're watching the other um, MTEL math videos that are all part of the Harvard Square MTEL math workshop series. Now, if you, if you like these videos, I highly recommend that you attend a Harvard Square MTEL math workshop. That way you get an overview of the test, and you get test strategies, and it's live. So you can raise your hand, you can talk to people, it can be a living and live experience, and that's where you're going to do your best learning. Um, or sign up for some one-to-one -one tutoring and get some very specific uh, questions answered. All right? Thanks so much, team. Have a great day. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.